Well, just to get us warmed up, for example, can you give us a couple of examples? Astrophysics, astronomy, astronaut, astrobiology. Okay. <laughs> It's early. It's not a six. All right. I'm. Oh man, this is gonna be a fun time. Oh, we should probably do our attendance poll per usual. Um, we okay. always like to know how many times you guys have been here. So you know, let us know. Is this your first time? Or have you been here since Moses wore short pants? I've been rewatching The Sopranos, so I'm using a lot of uh, Philly or Jersey slang. Since Moses wore. Oh. Got a lot of newbies. All right. Cool. All right. Welcome. Oh, that bimodal distribution. Lots of newbies. Lots of returners. I noticed in the chat already, we have, I think, two to three returning champions that were Dino 101 guest work. So, Serafina, again, no pressure, but you have a Hall of Fame cast watching right now. Lots of butterflies in my stomach right now. It's going to be fine, I think. It's going to be great. Listen, about 50% of us have been here before, so they know exactly what to expect. And what we always start with is a Dino of the day. So I'm going to share my screen right here. Oh, let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing. That'd be bad. Uh, you guys, we're going way back. One of the I, most iconic dinosaurs of all time. This is our dino of the day. This is Brontosaurus. You know it. You've heard of it. We love it. Uh, yes, it is a different dinosaur from Apatosaurus. And yes, it actually did exist. We we'll get into that a little bit later if you'd like to hear more details on that. But we are tasking you today, should you choose to, again, totally optional, to draw this digitally, uh, ink and paper, watercolor, I don't know, carbon blood, whatever you want to do, whatever your medium is. At the end of our time together, we're going to go around the room. You guys are going to hold up your renditions of Brontosaurus, but not just Brontosaurus, Brontosaurus in space. So however you want to interpret Brontosaurus in space, you know, and for a little bit of inspiration, you guys remember when SpaceX brought a Brontosaurus? So like the, what is it, like the zero G indicator? Or something? That's right, the zero G indicator. That's how they knew they had a uh, reached zero gravity the sparkly little brontosaurus started to float what i yeah. did not know this yeah you can buy it it's it's available it's on sale too you can get the same one I don't not think the one that went to space but the kind that went to space right, right. a replica of this. one that went to space so brontosaurus that is your dino of the day uh our guest expert of the day who i'm going to bring to the floor right now um you know her from twitter i love her from twitter she is studying uh you're about to get your about I, i'm gonna ask you seraphina how long until you get your astrophys uh, your degree in astrophysics? Um, you're studying for your PhD and you specialize yeah. in supernova, right? Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. I'm supposed to graduate next uh, August. So in a year and a couple months. Nice. Terrifying. Also, I think you owe us a drink, Dustin. Listen, friends hold friends accountable. You are now, okay. you're my now, you are now my drinking accountability buddy. For the evening so thank you for for keeping me on track anytime um, happy to carry the mantle yes wait so you're you're getting your phd at berkeley but you live in portland now well <laughs> um i'm in portland for the next couple months just because living in the bay is expensive the lab is closed you know it's like let's save some money and get to experience a different city but i'm in berkeley typically full-time okay okay do you do you have text like you have final exams right you're that's a thing that still happens when you get your PhD. Yeah, I'm not taking any classes right now. So I'm okay. teaching a class. They, they have final exams. Uh, I just get to sit and chill and do research. Uh, except for tonight. This was a bad attempt for me making a segue to the fact yeah. that you're not okay. to be taking an exam, kind of. So it is time to play everyone's favorite game, Dino or Not a Dino. Serafina, here's how this is going to work. I have a list right here of 10 different animals, some of which are real actual dinosaurs, some of which we have totally made up. Your job is to discern the real dinosaurs from the fake ones. Now, if you need a spelling at any point, I'm happy to spell these. People in the chat are sometimes helpful. So yeah, I would- like, like phone a friend or like- yeah. The chat text is your phone, phone, it's your text a friend basically. They okay. are at least okay. as good as chance. So. Yeah, that's a good deal of choice here. Uh, there's also, I should mention, there is a theme for the made up ones, for the not dinosaurs. And if you or anyone in the chat can discern that as we go, again, like we say every week, you win a thousand internet high fives. Those are important. I they, like those high fives. Again, they're slightly more valuable than Bitcoin. All right, here we go. 10 different animals, dino or not a dino. Animal number one, Antitonitrus. Antitonitrus. Okay, spelling please. A-N-T-E. T O N 
I T R U S anti tonitrus. Oh God, I'm getting mixed signals. Yeah, this one's <laughs> tough. These are all tough. <laughs> Lots of no's. I'm, I'm going to go with no. Uh, off to a rough start, that is a dinosaur. You were 0 for 1. <laughs> Y'all, come on. <laughs> They'll prove themselves. <laughs> Science is a collaborative process. And it's fine. It's fine. We, we have a lot. We have nine more. It's fine. Yeah, we're, you got time. You got time. Uh, all right, next, Romanops. The Romanops? <laughs> no, Romanops. R-O-M-A-N-O-P-S, Romanops. Uh, yes. Yes. I always wonder how many people in the chat are like furiously Googling these as I say them. <laughs> I'm not trust them. I'm getting the ones in all caps. I'm like, you know what you're talking about. I'm gonna We're go. a chat of integrity. <laughs> they would never. That is true. We are generally a chat of integrity. Um, what was your answer? I'm sorry. Yes or no for Roman Ops? That was a, that was a yes. Uh, no, that's a no. You're 0 for 2. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's going to be fine. We're going to get there Can together. You say nobody has ever lost. <laughs> no, no one has ever lost. No, no, one, lost. no one has ever lost. Next, and I'm going to get ready to drink Astrodon. Astrodon. Uh... <laughs> Jada with the maybe in the chat. Thank you. That's helpful. Uh, can you spell it? It's Astrodon. <laughs> I'm going to go with. Um, no. <laughs> You're over three. <laughs> You're over three. Rough start. Rough start. But that's just going to make the ascent even better. Are Here you we go. kidding? All right. You're yeah. an underdog story now. <laughs> Astrophocadia. Astrophocadia. You already had an astro one. So I feel yeah. like there's no possible way. Uh, what is what is your answer though? I need to ask astrophocadia. Also, maybe think of like, does this sound like something Dustin could make up or would make up? Astrophocadia. Um, <laughs> just looking at the chat, asking for someone to help me. Uh, I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> is that your final answer? <laughs> Not based on that reaction. Um. What is your final answer? I'm going to go with yes. Yes, that is. It is a dinosaur. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. Finally, that one. All right. There it is. I was wondering how long. We're getting we're... there, y'all. We're getting there. Listen, if you get these right, you get an air horn. What's better than that? Next, porcocephaly. Porcocephaly. Right. You need to spell it. P-O-R-C-O-C-E-P-H-A-L-E. Porcocephaly. I'm going to go with yes. I see a lot. Pig head? It says pig head. Um, listen, that is not a dinosaur, Serafina. <laughs> listen, they're going to get easier, hopefully. It's all right. Oh, listen, Lord. right now, yes, already. <laughs> we're halfway there. You've gotten one correct. You've gotten four incorrect. Uh -huh. um, I, I should remind you that if you don't get 60%, we, we kick you out of the Zoom. So no! you only have to get all of the rest of them correct. That's all you have to do. I like that you're building. I know what you're doing. You're building up the drama. I, I, this yeah, is this is all planned. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, uh, Archaeo Faber. Archaeo Faber. Um, Jada, I don't trust Archeo you. Archaeo Faber. Uh, Samantha says Mick No. I like that. I see a lot of. I see a lot of no's. I see, I see a lot of. Okay, no. Okay, no. that is correct. Archaeo Faber is not a dinosaur. Well done. Next, Australodocus. Australodocus. Austro, like A U S? Exactly. Not Astro. You don't have to drink oh. Austro as in like Australia. I yes. Guess. That is correct. Australodocus is right. a dinosaur. Wow. You're doing great. Three in a, two in a row? Three in a row? I don't know. Whatever. That's three, um, Dustin. That's three. Pro Gelarodon. Pro Gelarodon. Uh, wonder Pro Gelarodon. I wonder if anyone in the chat is. is There's uh, a, lot of chat a lot of notes. A lot of notes. Lots of, I'm going to go with no. That is correct. All right. I basically four. was reading the chat, taking an average, and then saying the answer. 
and I'm going to go with math. Scientist. You're a data scientist. I like that. You are right now, you're four for four, which according to math equals eight, which means you have two more. You have to get them both correct. Atlas Saurus. Atlas Saurus. That sounds like absolutely yes. Yeah, that does, doesn't it? Big yes. Big Both yes. And no. Wow. Damn you. Well, I'm I, gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna trust my gut. Oh yes. I'm gonna yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. It is a dinosaur. You're now five and four. Whew. We've gone above fifty percent. Last but not least. Well, actually, before before we do this last one, I'm gonna read the non dinos to see if anyone can discern what the what the theme was. We have. Romanops, we had Porcocephaly, we have Archaeophaber or Faber, we have Pro Geller Odon, and last but not least, Ruben Nikus. Ruben Nikus. Ruben Nikus. They are not Vanessa, they're not friends. You heard Geller and Ross know. This is nothing to do with friends. Absolutely not. It's not sandwiches either. Uh, Ruben Nikus. Ruben sounds like a sandwich. Ruben, but it's spelled R-U-B-I-N, as in maybe a person's last name that you might have heard of in your field. I don't, I don't know. Ruben Nikus. Wait, can you say the names again? All of them? Uh, sure. The, the non-ones, the non-dinos were Roman ops. We have Porco, or Porso, I don't know how you pronounce P-O-R-C-O, Porco, Cephaly, oh. Archeo Faber, uh, Pro Geller Odon, and last one is Ruben Nikus. All right, all right. Ruben Nikus. Oh, hip hop MD. He has an MD in hip hop. He might, he knows about astronomy too. He's he's on to something here. Air astrophysicist. <laughs> I don't know any of these people. I do know. That's a lie. I do. I do. I totally do. If 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 they're the Ruben, like they are Ruben. That is so. Is that a dinosaur? Or is that not a dinosaur? <laughs> Not. Ruben, yes, exactly. Just exactly like Vera Ruben. Okay, all right. So is that a dinosaur is what I'm asking. No, no, no. that is correct. That is not a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christina. We did uh, it. Whew, I'm sweating. That was close, but you have won the game. So all of the not dinosaurs were based off of female astrophysicists that you should know, like Nancy Grace Roman, Carolyn Porco, Sandra Faber, Margaret Geller, and of course, Vera Rubin. And then your name will be on this list soon enough, right? Aww. Right, of course. Nice. Um, and just to prove to everyone that the other ones were actual dinosaurs, this is Antitone Tri. I can never even pronounce this one right. This yeah. is a little cool sauropod. So sauropods are long neck dinosaurs. This is a pro sauropod or a sauropodomorph. Um, it's one of the earliest ones. It walked on all fours, but actually had the ability to grasp with its hands. The thing we didn't see in like later uh, sauropods like Brontosaurus, Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus. In fact, all of our actual dinosaurs are different types of sauropods tonight. What? Say that again? A weird looking dinosaur. I love the coloration on this one. We have Astrophocodia. Oh, I should mention this one, by the way. This is South Africa. Astrodon was found in Maryland. Astrophocodia. Uh, this is Texas. Australodocus. This is Tanzania. And Atlasaurus was found in Morocco. These are all actual real sauropod dinosaurs. Serafina, you won the game. Does it feel like a weight has been lifted from your shoulders? I feel like I passed the first test. There's okay. like subsequent tests, but I, I got the first one. Okay. Well, speaking of tests, kind of tests, a poll is not a test. That was an attempt at a bad segue. Uh, before we get into actually rebranding the night sky with our new constellations, we do have a poll. Um, Serafina, because you are the guest part, you actually can't vote. So I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on this. But Christine and I were just discussing, other than like the major ones like astronomy, astrophysics, which is your favorite astro prefixed thing? Is it astrology, astrobiology, astroturf, or astroglide? Please vote now. Can I give my thoughts? Yes, please, please, please let us know. Zero votes for astrology. Let's just establish oh, that. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay, okay. Christina, I'm um, gonna bring back. What, what are your thoughts here? Oh, well, I mean, we're going to have to really revamp our, our plan here because this was going to be about sun signs and uh, what's rising and what have you. So uh, I, yeah, I should we got a plan for tonight. I, I have nothing to give in this. Uh -oh. Four of these have an astro prefix. So at least one drink, everyone. At least one. <laughs> Imogene in the chat is endorsing Astroglide. So that is worth noting. Listen, I like Astroglide as next to the much 
as next is the much guy as much as the <laughs> uh, but it's it's not my favorite uh lubricant i've already said too much um all right here we go i'm going to share these results Ooh, close astrobiology slightly beats out astroglide but you can practice astrobiology using astroglide so maybe one day we can combine those two i, I don't know yeah i mean personally i look forward to combining astroturf and astroglide Okay. No more questions. <laughs> no more questions. All right, let in, let's get into the meat of the matter. So tonight we are again, re we're rebranding the night sky. There are no dinosaur constellations. There are lots of bird constellations like eagles and swans, but there are no non-avian extinct dinosaur constellations until now. So I thought we would start though with, well, because Brontosaurus is our dino of the day, we should probably start with one of the most famous, just like Brontosaurus is arguably one of the most famous dinosaurs, arguably the most famous constellation, Ursa Minor, which is also known as Little Dipper. Um, Serafina, you're here to give us a little bit of actual science. Can you tell, like, what, what, do we, what do we need to know about this with respect to the actual, like, astrophysics, or is there a specific star we should know in this constellation? Yes. The one star that I think everybody should know in this constellation is Polaris, okay. which is the North Star. It won't be our North Star forever, but it's our North Star right now. And the reason it's not our North Star forever is because the Earth wobbles. And with that wobbling, we change North Stars every 100,000 years or so. I I made that number up, but it's like some amount of time that we change North Stars. So Polaris was not always our North Star, and it won't forever be our North Star. <laughs> I like, I love that, like, as really as paleontologists and as astrophysics, we think in like deep time, you're like, it's not oh, gonna yeah. be that one forever. And I'm like, oh shit, soon? And you're like, no, in like a hundred thousand years. Well, yeah, like, no. Our lives. It will Relatively be comprehensible time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, uh, you know, it's a dipper, but like you guys look at this dipper. It's been, I mean, look at it. Obviously it already, well, I probably share my screen so you can actually look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a body. There's either a neck or a tail, whichever way you want to go. So this one's pretty easy. This is clearly Brontosaurus, right? So we are rebranding the Little Dipper as Brontosaurus. This is pretty good, honestly. Like, why didn't they just do that in the first place? Um, probably because when these were, were named, people didn't know dinosaurs were a thing. That'd be my first guess. But, you know, science progresses, and here we are. And this is official now, by the way. So you should bring this up with your thesis or dissertation committee. Yeah, I'll contact the International Astronomical Union and just say, excuse me. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, so that is our first one. That one's easy, we knew that one. All right, so our next constellation is Aries. So as far as I know, Aries represents the ram. We got the whole golden fleece situation from Greek mythology. Uh, what's, is there a star? Like what is the science we should know about this constellation? Yeah, uh, so <laughs> there's not a lot going on in Aries, to be honest. There's okay. one really luminous star called Hamal and it's the head of the ram. I honestly don't know which way the ram, I mean, how does anyone see a ram in that? I honestly, I don't, people use their imaginations a lot in astronomy, mm -hmm. um, but this star is like almost a hundred times as bright as the sun. Wow. So it's, you know, it's bright. Yeah. What, what is it, do we, like what type of star is it? Do we know? Um, it's two times the mass of the sun. So it's like, I don't know. It's like a solar type star. It's not particularly special in any way. I mean, stars get up to a hundred solar masses or more. So two solar masses is like not that special, but it's just special enough to be a star and not a planet. Okay. Okay. Well, actually I'm going to ask the chat right now, you guys, if Aries is supposed to be the Ram and we're turning this into a dinosaur, ideally some sort of connection with ramming, any guesses as to what constellation we are going to rebrand this as? What dinosaur? Oh, connection with ramming. I'm seeing Pachycephalosaurus. I'm ask, I see people asking for uh, some pterosaur representation with Quetzalcoatlus. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see lots of Pachy. Uh, I see some requests for some Ceratopsians. Someone mentioned the sex lake, which I knew that would happen. Already? Uh, yeah, already. it's already 925. Usually this is until like 950, but we hit it. So uh, Christina, real quick, before we reveal what Aries is becoming, please enlighten us. What the fuck is a sex lake? Of course, maybe you saw the sex lake mentioned in the chat. If you're new here, we owe you an explanation uh, and your life will be better for it. According to one paleontologist, 
Enormous sauropods, like our dino of the day, the long neck brontosaurus, must have had to have had sex with each other, not on land because they would have crushed each other's bones, but in the water so that they were buoyant. Uh, we assume one of these places was a lake, and every week we fantasize about taking a trip to the sex lake. One day, one day it'll happen. That's if, yeah. if I made Jurassic Park, we'd it'd just be a bunch of like sex lakes. It'd be great. It'd be if great. you build it, they will come. Mm, that was fucking great. I love that. I'm gonna drink to that. That's a horrible dad joke. That's a great dad joke. I'm gonna drink to that. You guys in the chat, you're right. Aries, we're ramming. Obviously, this is gonna become a pachycephalosaurus with those nine inches of bone in its head. I'm not making that literally what it had in its head. Uh, if you, do you see it? Do you guys, do you guys see it? There we go. It's clearly a pachycephalosaurus. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I see the nine inches of bone. That's good. Yeah. Um, also, just science fact, we're pretty sure at this point they didn't actually ram heads straight together as much as kind of like a flanking side by side, like hitting motion like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the, the running into each other like a ram, that's kind of an outmoded idea. But still, very, very cool dino. All right, so that was Aries. So we have a Brontosaurus uh, constellation. Now we have a Pachycephalosaurus constellation. Next, probably my favorite constellation with respect to just like what its name is. That's not it. It is Cassiopeia. So Serafina, what's the science? What do we need to know about Cassiopeia? Cassiopeia is also Pea? my favorite. Is it well, one of my favorite constellations. Pea or Pia? Uh, I think I change what I say. I think I normally say Cassiopeia. Okay. But I think I've said it both ways. Okay. Um, this constellation is very cool because it can be seen all year round in the Northern Hemisphere. Not every constellation can be seen all year round. And Tycho's supernova, which I am obsessed with because I study supernova, was visible in this constellation in the 1500s. I think it was like 1572. Can you quickly define, like when you say supernova, like what yes. is a supernova? If I have no idea what that is. It is a star exploding at the end of its life. So it basically collapses and then explodes and we can see that explosion from Earth. And we can actually see the remnant of the explosion still. It's a nebula and it's like these beautiful colors around this like little dot, which is the remnant of the core of the star. Oh, very cool. Okay. It's, a, it's an exploding star, which like how much cooler could you, I mean, that's like the coolest thing in the world, right? Or in the universe, really. In the universe. Um, you guys, any guesses as to what a uh, dinosaur we should probably make Cassiopeia into? Anyone? Anyone in the chat? Anyone? 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 I see Spiky Boy, maybe a pterodactyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see two requests for our uh, okay. flying reptile friends. Also, Stegos, Spiky mm -hmm. Boys. We have some Triceratops stands in the chat. We do. We do. Unfortunately, it is not Triceratops. It's clearly the back of a Stegosaurus obviously. So Cassiopeia is being rebranded in the night sky as Stegosaurus. I can't. Oh, can't oh this is also an exercise in 3D reasoning. I thought it flipped upside down. <laughs> Couldn't see it. Now I do. With a Thagomizer. Dustin, what's a Thagomizer? Uh, Thagomizer are those three foot, well, three foot like or meter long spikes on the end of the tail of Stegosaurus. And then they get their name from an old Gary Larson cartoon. Um, from which a caveman named Thag met his demise by a Thagomizer. Um, but just FYI, Seraphine, I know you're not a paleontologist, so you might not know this, but dinosaurs and humans never existed at the same time. It's just a cartoon. It's just a cartoon. But I, I, birds are literally dinosaurs and they are alive today, and that is an excuse to drink to birds. <laughs> All right. We have rebranded Ursa Minor, 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 Ursa Minor as Brontosaurus. We've rebranded Aries as Pachycephalosaurus. We've rebranded Cassiopeia as Stegosaurus. Now we are halfway there. We're going to do six new rebranded constellations. But because we're halfway there, we're going to pause for everyone's brand new favorite halftime game. Ladies and gentlemen, I have blatantly stolen this from my new favorite podcast. It's called Take Line. They play a game called Take Survivor, where only the strongest takes survive. Our game, however, is going to be called opinion dominion where also only the strongest takes survive so here's how this is going to work first i need to bring to the fore all of our contestants for tonight we also have normally m would be running or administering the whiteboard challenge because graphic design is her passion but because she did so well last week in opinion dominion she is back 
to defend her. Well, I guess you didn't win, but you played well. So you're back. My third place title. Third place. Yeah, you, you, you won the medal stand. It's a bronze medal, nothing to balk at, right? Uh, if you, you may remember last week, my best friend from childhood, John, was here, and he was also our contestant, but he lost miserably and thus has been exiled from the game forever. And so now we bring in a new competitor, the hip hop MD, Maynard. Welcome to Opinion Dominion. Woo woo! What up, what up, what up? Woo woo! All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fare much better than he did last week. Far as low, Maynard, but we look forward to it. You can't fare okay. worse. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. There is going to be three different rounds. I'm going to ask you guys a question. You're going to have to give us your strongest take on that in like literally 15, 20 seconds or so. And then sweet audience, your job is going to be voting off who had the weakest take. Whose take was the weakest? Not Remember, this isn't necessarily who you like the most or whose take you agree with or disagree with. Just who had the weakest take? Leave that up to you guys to vote off the weakest take. Here we go. Round number one. For this first round, we're going to go in order from Serafina to Christina to M and then to Maynard. Question number one. Serafina, which is the best fast food? Tater tots because they are the perfect texture. It's from Sonic. Tater tots oh, from Sonic. They're the perfect okay. texture. They're the perfect heat. They go with ketchup just perfectly. You can always... Uh, adjust the amount of ketchup exactly how you want it with the tater tot. Okay. I like that. Okay. Also, they're brought to you by someone on roller skates, right? Oh, yes. Also that. That's very exciting. You know, there's an element of thrill with that. That's all I remember about Sonic. All right. Yes. So Serafina saying tater tots from Sonic specifically. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. Strong take. Christina, what, which, what, what is the best fast food? Okay. Imagine it. You're up at a time that you don't want to be up. Maybe you have a flight to catch. Maybe you're you're taking a big test. You're up at some ungodly hour. You know who's there for you? McDonald's. And they want to give you a hash brown and oh. orange juice. Salty, sweet, oh. joy, fuel for your journey. Hash brown plus OJ from McDonald's. Okay, so... At first, I was like, oh, you're going to go with another potato product. But I like you're going with a combination. You want those two in your mouth at the same time. I sure do. OK. Hash brown and OJ from McDonald's. I like that. All right. M, which is the best fast food? Going to have to go with KFC. <laughs> As many of you know, I'm very passionate about Kentucky Fried Chicken. It is the only white people chicken that is seasoned. <laughs> It's also the only drive through that you can get mashed potatoes at very accessibly. Plus, KFC does really, really great marketing, like fun anime dating games and giving people bowl cuts for free if they order a famous bowl. It's magical. They have a charismatic old man as a mascot, and I've been to his grave. Wow. Okay, so I was going to ask you about this, like, sexy, lustful eyes, hipster uh, guy, but now you're, you took me somewhere. You've been to Colonel Sanders' grave. Yeah, he's the only fast food mogul whose who's grave I've walked on top of. Do you, do you sprinkle seasoning on top? Like, what do you, all right, all right. So end with the KFC take. Maynard, which is the best fast food? All right, this is very, I'm going to make this very, very, very easy, okay? <laughs> think, you got to think outside the box. It's easy to go to McDonald's. It's easy to go to Sonic and and out KFC. You just drive through. Think about luxury fast food, all right? <laughs> what better delicious, sweet, fast food than a nice, toasty Cinnabon? Cinnabon is easily the finest of the fast foods. It's gourmet fast food. Think about it. A moist, delicious center. You could even get it customized. Little do people know, if you actually go to a Cinnabon and ask for the Sin version, they will put the frosting at the bottom of the Cinnabon. All that juice now collects and rises as the heat comes up in your delicious Cinnabon. And in a world filled of nutritional facts and everything, they don't care about anything nutritional. It is what you get. A nice, fatty, sugary, delicious <laughs> Cinnabon. It can't be beat. Cinnabon is by far the best fast food. Wow. Let's go. All right. All right. Wow. So Serafina went with tater tots from Sonic. Perfect texture. We have Christina going with hash browns and OJ combo from McDonald's. M, sexy KFC, just all around. And then Maynard, 
uh, giving us the insider scoop on how to properly order cinnamon. Also, extra bonus points for me for using the phrase moist, delicious center. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to vote someone out of opinion, dominion. I'm going to open the poll now. Remember, you were voting for who had the weakest take. Who's got to go? Who's the first to be eliminated from opinion, dominion? Please vote now. Who's got to go? Oh, boy. I'm so scared. What? No vote for me. Okay, one vote for Maynard. Bold. And now I see two. Ooh. Oh, oh, it's, it's tight. Oh, this yeah. is very close. This is very close. Oh, boy. Have you ever had a tie before? No. Oh, no, we have not. No, we love being divisive. Right. Oh, wow. 89% of the vote is in. There's one vote separating. Come on. Vote. Every vote counts. Well, every Get vote in there. Counts. If you haven't voted, <laughs> one vote separates me and Serafina. Oh, oh, two now. I'm going to give it five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. I'm ending the poll. Oh, Seraphine, I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, no. That's okay. My, my take was weak. It's okay. Listen, I, we don't have a lot of Sonics on the East Coast. And I, love, I know a lot of us here on the East Coast, so that might be a part of it. Y'all have never enjoyed the true goodness of Sonic Tater Tots. I mean, they are just out of this world. It's a Sonic. Listen, you, 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 you already sold it. You already sold it. <laughs> All right, Serafina, Serafina we're going we're gonna to bring you back a little bit, obviously, but as far as opinion dominion goes, I'm sorry. Bye. All right, here we go. Round number two. Your next question. This one, We're going to go in a reverse order. Maynard, then M, then Christina. Your second prompt for opinion dominion. Which extinct animal would make the best pet? Which extinct animal, not necessarily a dinosaur, if you give me a dinosaur if you want, which extinct animal would make the best pet? Maynard. Hot take. Hit us. All right, extinct animal. All right, you got to think about the best pets, all right? What are the most common pets that everybody has? Cats and dogs, right? You're the cat lover, or dog lover, or both. The best extinct pet animal is the Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger. Think about it. It's the best of both worlds. You get kind of a cat like marsupial but at the same time it's very dog-like all right and it's a marsupial it carries its babies in a pouch what could be cuter than a pet that has its little babies carried around inside its pouch you already have pouch dogs now you have a pouch already inside the pet that you own a tasmanian tiger is by far the best extinct pet animal let's go Man, yes. people in the chat are loving this take i believe that is a strong take the thylacine all right and what is the best what would be the best pet extinct animal what is behind you? Can well, you move over? Okay. Because I am from Southern Ohio, I have to go with the Mastodon slash Woolly Mammoth because most people don't know the difference between them. Um, what's better than a big, warm and fuzzy elephant friend who can carry you? You don't need to worry about your community. And, it's fair. It's fair. And if we're going to base this off the fact that they're fairly closely, closely related to modern day elephants, we can expect that they would have like a greater capacity for empathy so that they're like dogs they care about you a lot okay. but we know that they care about you a lot all right and with the mass on slash mammoth i like the joke you know we're gonna go with two different animals because people can't tell them apart anyway christina what is your hot take for which extinct animal would become the best pet all right audience look at yourself look at where you are you're not at mammal 101 you're at dino 101 Yes. And yes. I know that you know that we all love a dinosaur. So my choice is a dinosaur, specifically the C. Tacosaurus. Yeah. It's yes. Specifically C. Tacosaurus. It's a little ceratopsian uh, for scale. Oh man, it's happening. For scale, it's like the size of a little, or a big cat or a small dog. I love it because uh, you think Triceratops with the big frill, the big chonky boys, but it's just a little house-sized Ceratopsian. And my favorite thing about it is how its name matches its face. It always looks like it's just seen a taco. See Tacosaurus. Strong take out of all of these, I think would make great pets. Maynard saying the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger. M's going with the Mastodon slash mammoth. Christina with the C Tacosaurus. Uh, the hungriest of all dinosaur names. I'm going to open up the polling. Remember, you are voting for who's got to go, who had the weakest take the second round. Who's got to go? Who's leaving Opinion Dominion? Christina M. or Maynard, please vote now. Oh, wow. This one's not even close. Sorry, M. <laughs> I have 
never seen the bar on a pole move up faster in my entire life. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just love them a lot. And I'm sorry if that's not good enough for all of you. They can't think, take the mammoths away from you, Em. They can't. So I think maybe, you know, so, tough times, the economy's not doing so great. You'd have to buy a lot of food to feed a mammoth or a mastodon. Maybe that is on people's minds. Em, don't feel bad. That was that was a good take. I like I like I like mammoths. All right. Uh, wow, that was the most. Sorry, Em. We love you, but you have to go. Once again, you you've made it to the bronze medal. You're you're stuck on third every week. Bye, Em. We'll see you in a minute. All right. It is down to Christina and Maynard. Uh, you guys, here we are. We're in the final round of Opinion Dominion. Our last question. I think Maynard, I'm gonna have you go first. Christina, you're gonna go second. Okay. Land right. or water? <clears throat> Just either or, like which one we prefer? Got it. You gotta pick one. Are we going land or are we and when I say water, I mean like ocean, seas, lakes versus land. Are we on land? Or are we on water? Land or water? All right. I Jada, have wait, to... real quick, Jada in the chat says there's a correct fucking answer. There is not a correct answer, Jada. That's why we played this game. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'm an Aquaman, so I got to go with water. All right. I got to go with water. Yes, my black ass is going with water. Okay. Think about how amazing water is. All of our earth, like 70% of the earth is already water. You have streams, you have rivers, you have lakes, and you have the oceans. Okay. We walk on land every single day. How often do you walk on water? Well, not technically, but <laughs> you, how often do you go out of the water? And when you do go out in the water on a beach, when you're on a boat, how that's the greatest time of your life whoever goes on a boat and says i had a miserable time on the boat or whoever goes to the beach and says i had a miserable time on the beach and you want to talk about space we got surfing over here the astrophysicists we literally have space in our waters have you ever gone down deep underneath the ocean and seen alien like creatures all right fish all sorts of different things that are alien like live right in our very own oceans okay we have yet to explore the oceans we have explored more of space than the deep sea all right i have to go with oceans all the way so i'm a water guy let's go aqua team <laughs> all right maynard coming in piping hot with water christina how do you feel land or water i agree that water is the right choice but okay. for different reasons. Oh, okay. interesting. interesting. So everything that we know, go with me, everything that we know and care about on land has been shaped by water. Think about where major civilizations have cropped up over human time. It's on a river. It's on, a, it's on an ocean. And as we search for other life somewhere out there in the universe, we are looking for life based on where we find water on other planets. And as a geologist, I'm, I'm a land dwelling creature. I would rather stay on land, but so much of what I know about land comes from the way that water has shaped it over time. Look at the Grand Canyon. Look at the ripples that move across the sand. A hundred million years from now, someone like us is gonna walk up and be like, check it out. This was a beach, now it's a desert. I love the way that water has shaped what we understand about humans, land, and the way that we relate to it. All right. I did not see both of you taking the same side. I didn't see that coming, but you did have very different takes. Uh, I personally believe, before we open the voting, I personally believe you guys are both wrong. This is Dino 101. The thing that makes dinosaurs a dinosaur is that dinosaurs were the first major group of animals to completely abandon water and live only on land. So screw both of you guys. These are horrible takes. No, I'm kidding. They're both very good takes, but only one of you can survive. So in this last poll, you're not voting on who leaves. You're voting on the champion. Who had the better take? Who will be crowned this week's Opinion Dominion champion? Is it Christina or is it Maynard? This is the final vote. Who wins Opinion Dominion? Please vote now. With, oh, it's close. It's close. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Now well, you're voting for the one you want. It's, this it's, is true. We're flipping the script. Wow. Wow. Maynard, you, you came far. Come on. It doesn't come, look on. Like come on. Come on. <laughs> The, the mail-in ballots are coming in 95% of the vote. This is a great voter turnout. You love to it see is. it. It is. Especially when I'm winning. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, I'm going to end this poll. The results are in. I'm calling it like CNN on election night. Christina, you have won 
this week's round of Opinion Dominion. Uh, Maynard, do you have any final parting words? Christina's take was amazing. I thought about that perspective. I didn't present it. Maybe if I had presented that, Ooh. you're absolutely right. Our oceans have actually formed all of our amazing land formations. You're the geologist, so you got that. But yes, much love. And there was a correct answer. It was oceans. So <laughs> end of the day, it had to be oceans. But yes, I, I, I am happy to lose to Christina today. And listen, this isn't the last we've seen of you. You guys, Maynard is going to be our special guest for on May 21st when we have a dinosaur prom. That is right. We're having a dinosaur prom. We need a master of ceremonies and a DJ. Clearly, you're going to be him. So Maynard, if we don't see you before then, we're going to see you on May 21st. Thank you for playing. Christina, do you have any word? Not, there you go. There's your heart. Thank you. Uh, Christina, as a champion, would you like to say anything to the adoring masses? Uh, yes. First of all, everyone was for my absolutely formidable opponents. I certainly sweat. Uh, yes, I will take any opportunity to shower you with my hot takes and um, thank you for this opportunity and honor. Of course. Serafina, you're back. Hi, how's it going? I'm great. I, I really appreciate all the hot takes and, you know, it's a good thing I lost because my takes were not as good. Also, I would have disagreed on the water thing, but that's fine. Uh you and me. I, I agree. I agree as well. Now, all right, we got three more dinosaur constellations to rebrand. The next one, Christina, I know you you had a couple of things you wanted to say, so I'm actually going to throw this to you first. Our next dinosaur, well, soon to be dinosaur constellation is Cygnus. Christina, you're like, I want to talk about Cygnus. What what did you want to tell people about Cygnus? Um, I wanted to mention that this is already a dinosaur constellation uh, because it's a swan. Uh it's a swan. Can't you see it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a bird, which is a drink. That's a bird, which is a dinosaur. Uh, and in case you're new here, birds are dinosaurs. The closest living relative to dinosaurs are birds. So if you're looking at a swan or a swan-like shape in the sky, uh, you're looking at a modern day dinosaur. So uh, the Greeks had a story about how Zeus maybe consensually seduced a swan uh and now she's in the sky um long story short <laughs> <laughs> yada 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 she's in the sky okay yada, yada, and she's in the sky uh this is also associated with phaeton who uh wanted to borrow his dad's chariot who would bring day and night uh and then he crashed it i also played that character in high school so i was very happy to see phaeton show up uh who else has done Ovid's Metamorphosis. Cool. All right, yeah. Serafina, what what like sciencey info do we need to know about what clearly here is a swan? Yeah, um, those were great, Christina. Um, <laughs> I okay, two things. One is that there are ten stars in that constellation that have planets that we know of, which is dope. The second thing that I think is really cool is that on Mars. Deneb, which is the, one of the brightest stars or the brightest star in Cygnus, is the North Star. So for Mars, the North Star is Deneb, not for, for now. For now. For now. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know if there's, I don't know. Good question. Oh, because it would depend on whether or not Mars has a wobble. Wobbles. Yep. Do you remember that song, Wobble? Never mind. That's, a, that's for the after party. Do you want to show us the song, Dustin? No, I, I only twerk in the after party, and that's not a joke if you've been to the after party, which is not sanctioned by AO, Atlas of Sure at all, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, uh, anyone in the chat have any idea what non-avian dinosaur we are going to make Cygnus into? Because it's clearly, it's a swan here, but it's about to be someone else. Any guesses? If anyone can get this, you, you win. Uh, maybe another pterosaur, a pterodactyl, a therizinosaur, maybe another kind of theropod. There is no source like the Rizinosaurus. Love that one. Oh. I can't believe you guys guessed it. You're absolutely right. There is no source like the Rizinosaurus. Clearly, that's the Rizinosaurus, which is a crazy theropod with the largest claws of all time. Meter long claws for an herbivore. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You just can't do it. So, yes, Cygnus is now the Rizinosaurus. So, when you look up in the night sky and you see Cygnus, you're seeing this crazy giant murder chicken. All right, that is Cygnus. We got two more. Next, objectively the best star sign, Leo. Wait, why is it objectively? We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. First, tell us the science we need. What is the star science that we need okay. to know about this concept? So 
the brightest star in Leo is called Regulus. The cool thing about Regulus is that it's a Harry Potter character, but also because it's a four star system. So like we know it as one star, but it's actually two binary star systems mm -hmm. that look like one star to our eyes. Oh, they're just so far away they appear to be one. Yes, most stars actually are binary star systems in the universe. <laughs> over, over half of the stars are actually binary stars. We a lot of people in the chat like we stand by stars here for it. Ayo. Love it. Uh, any guesses? Oh wait, I just showed you. I'm just gonna show you. Like we already did Brontosaurus, right? So this is clearly this is clearly a plesiosaur, which technically is a marine reptile, not a dinosaur. Lived at the same time. Equally badass, Loch Ness monster looking guys. But clearly this is a plesiosaur, right? Right. I mean, I'm not crazy here. So from now on, when you look up. I guess Maynard, Christina, this is a water animal. So you get a nod to you. Uh, just real quick, before we move on to our last one, I just wanna, I just wanna do this quick poll because I'm just curious to know which objectively, objectively is the best star sign? Is it Leo, 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 or Leo? Which is the best star sign? Please vote now. And I'm sure what this Leo wants me to say is this is the most Leo poll there's ever been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one vote. I was like, no one vote. Don't vote. <laughs> we do have the lowest voter turnout all night. <laughs> People are refusing. To vote. <laughs> uh, listen, I as a Leo, I felt like contractually obligated to make this type of poll. All right, we don't need to see the answers because we already know what the answer is. <laughs> Leo. All right. Last but not least, we are moving on to another star sign. Uh, I don't know. Do we have any Scorpios in the chat? Any Scorpios in the chat? Anyone? Anyone? Because we got Scorpius now. Uh, Serafina, what do we, this is a pretty cool, weird looking one. What do we need to know? So this constellation has 13 planets. No, I lied. 13 stars that have planets. They might oh. have multiple planets. Okay. And the brightest star is called Antares. And that's a red supergiant. And the cool thing about red supergiants is that they will at some point explode as supernova. Okay. Two questions. First of all. What makes something a super giant versus just like a giant or a regular star? Like, is it, well, I assume the size, but is there like, how do we, is there like, like, you know what I mean? Like, is it bigger than 10 feet? You know what I mean? Like, how do you, what is the measurement? So you measure things in space, at least sizes and masses and radii compared to our sun. Okay. So red super giants can be, you know, like 30 times the mass of our sun, oh, wow. which like, if you stop to think about is just like, incomprehensibly big yeah, yeah yeah so i assume it's called a red super giant because it like appears reddish yes is so like Beetlejuice, certain... my yeah. favorite star is a red super giant and it literally looks red why is it red i assume it's some sort of chemical signature like what are the gas like what makes it red uh there's a couple of things but the biggest thing is its temperature so you know there's blue stars, there's red stars, there's brown stars. Brown stars are brown dwarfs. They're like not hot enough to fuse and become stars that we look at. Um, red stars are slightly cooler. Blue stars are, are the hottest. Okay, okay. Christina, do you have any idea what this is gonna become? I'm curious to know if, if you can tell. What are we uh, branding this as? Maybe. Uh, maybe an ankylosaur with a club tail. A okay, club okay, tail. okay. Not bad, not bad. I should also mention this is a uh, this is an animal that defeated Orion the hunter. The scorpion did uh, defeated Orion the hunter, and then Zeus was like, "Yo, that's that's legit. I'm gonna put you in the night sky to look down on us forever." Uh, but no longer is it a scorpion. Uh, does this help? Does this, <gasps> does this help anyone? anyone? Yeah, I see someone got it in the chat. Dilophosaurus. It is a Dilophosaurus. Uh, maybe this will help a little bit more, a little bit of like the spit coming out. Is that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so first of all, let me just mention that there is absolutely no scientific evidence for either a frill or spinning, right? That's total creative license uh, in Jurassic Park's uh, part. But the cool thing that people don't often think about about the Dilophosaurus is they have a double crest on their head. You can't see it here behind their fake uh, frill, so I just put it right behind the frill here. But yes, this is now. Dilophosaurus, no longer is it a scorpion. Sasha, my sister, I see you in the chat. I know you're a Scorpio. You're no longer a scorpion. You're now a Dilophosaurus, the mortal enemy, enemy of, uh, I was gonna say Wayne Newton. What is his name? Wayne, what is, why am I forgetting his name in Jurassic Park? 
Help us out in the chat. It's not Wayne. What's his name? Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Knight. Knight. Thank you, Wayne Knight. Thank you. I combined Newman and I, I see what I did there. I see what I did there. All right. So now Scorpius is now the Lophosaurus. All right. Uh, we have come to the end of our six constellations. We have rebranded them. So now up in the nice sky, we have Brontosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, Stegosaurus, Therizinosaurus, a Plesiosaurus, so not a dinosaur, uh, and Dilophosaurus. Before we go to questions, because I'm sure, I mean, I have astrophysics questions for you, Serafina. Also, that's a drink because I said astro. Before we do that, I do have one more poll that Christine and I discussed that we'd like to ask you guys. Other than the standard, um, cons we've been talking about constellations, right? But other than constellation, which is your least, least favorite con prefixed feeling? Is it contempt, consternation, constipation, or Connecticut? Which is your least favorite con prefixed feeling? Justin, this is the one I think you didn't tell me about. Yeah, how did I do? Did I do okay? Did you like this one? How do I choose? Yeah, stop. Ooh. Okay, so people do not like constipation. Apparently the anxiety of consternation is not a problem for people. <laughs> I think I feel better equipped to deal with contempt. I think I feel that more often and I have more ways of coping, but constipation. Seraphine, how would you have voted here? I would have voted Connecticut. Connecticut, that's fair. It looks, what I'm learning here is the worst place in the world to be constipated is in Connecticut. Is in Connecticut. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna share these results. You guys, you guys have voted. Uh, there are ways that you can get around that should that happen to you. All right, uh, Christina, let's go to some questions for Serafina. Uh, we have a few and then we're going to do our gallery. That's right. I have a few lined up. Send them to me in the chat at this point. If you still have a question for Serafina about anything that you've seen or heard tonight, anything astro related, take a sip. Let's start with um, one of the first questions I got a little while back when you were talking about supernova. What is, what is at the core of that? What's at the core of a star and how can we tell? So there's elements that um, basically ram into each other. And when that happens, it's called nuclear fusion. So these elements are basically protons and electrons and neutrons um, that create the core of the star. Um, and at some point when the supernova basically collapses, it reaches a point where the temperatures can't get hot enough to keep ramming these elements together. And so because it can't get hot enough, the uh, pressure from the core of the star beats out gravity and the star explodes. And we can tell that because, oh God, I don't know. We do a lot of really cool physics. <laughs> it's hard to explain. That's good enough for us, really cool physics. I believe you. Christine, uh, I, I'm gonna interject real quick before the next questions. A couple of people asked in the chat about your dog, Serafina. Um, your dog's name is Comet, correct? Yes, this is Comet. Okay, and which is, it's yeah. egregious that you would bring Comet to a dinosaur show, but we're gonna, allow, <laughs> we're gonna let it slide because we're rebranding the nice guy with dinosaur. So Comet, we love you. Comet, he's so asleep. He's like, so, so asleep. oh, hey buddy. Yeah, he doesn't care. Hi, what a good boy. How do we tell if a star system is a binary star system? We try to do some really, really difficult resolution to try to see if there's a radius gap between each star. Also, you know, we can look at the orbital uh, velocities of the star and see, does it make sense for its mass? And based on how fast the star is rotating, we can try to understand if there's some extra mass that we don't actually see. I seem to remember learning about wobble in that situation as well, right? Does wobble play into making those observations? Totally, yeah. So there's like basically one star can exert, you know, if it's really massive, it can exert um, a gravitational force on the other one and cause it to wobble in its orbit as it um, rotates the other star. I love it. Orbit and the other star. Even another reason to play that song as we leave. I found it and I'm very excited. Uh, what is your favorite myth? or legend some uh, associated with a constellation? Mm, I think maybe Cassiopeia, but that's just because I, that's maybe the only one I know. Um, you, mean about, you mean Stegosaurus? You mean Stegosaurus? 
right? Stegosaurus is what you're talking about. Rebrand. Uh, yeah, that's okay. the one. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the myth doesn't make as much sense if you don't include Cassiopeia. <laughs> <laughs> but we can come up with one for Stegosaurus, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, explanations of what we as people observe change constantly over time. So we'll come up with a Stegosaurus one. Uh, what are you currently working on? Tell us more about your research. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am currently studying a specific type of supernova, a core collapse supernova that basically um, we can try to learn something about the rate of the expansion of the universe from studying these uh, particular supernova. So the rate of the expansion of the universe is not actually well understood. And so I'm trying to use this particular type of star, exploding star to figure it out. NBD, just the rate of expansion of the universe. Uh, Will all stars eventually explode? No, not all stars are massive enough to explode. So like our sun isn't big enough to explode. It'll get really big. It'll become a red giant and consume all of the inner planets. And then it'll collapse and fade into what we call a white dwarf. So are those the options? Either you explode out and then just explode or, or you explode a little bit and then collapse in? Yeah, so that's basically the two options. Um, some stars are not massive enough to uh, fuse at all, and they just kind of live as brown dwarfs. Um, so those are the smallest stars. Some stars explode and form black holes or neutron stars, and then some stars explode and completely explode all of the internal parts of the star, and there's nothing left. Um, so there's a little bit of variability, but that's like the two big, the big things that can happen. I think most of us probably are after tonight. If we are people who now want to look at the sky, do you recommend equipment? Is there a good telescope for somebody who's new? How do we get ourselves looking at the stars? Yeah. Um, so honestly, the first thing is get a really good pair of binoculars. You can see a lot with good binoc binoculars and they're way cheaper than telescopes. Um, Celestron uh, are pretty good telescopes. I don't own a telescope. Um, I did, but it, it, it broke, sadly. Um, so I don't have great recs. Um, if you can go to an observatory, you know, obviously when it's safe, go to an observatory, see, you know, look through some of the big telescopes that are as big as 36 inches across the mirror. Um, you can see Saturn and Jupiter, but you can also see those through telescopes you can just buy. And I, I, just, I love the idea that we have made the crossover between bird watching, dinosaurs, that's a drink, and space watching. All you exactly. need is binoculars. Love it. Yeah, binoculars are super powerful. You can see a lot with them. Get them. Go bird watching, go space watching. Yeah. Why, as one last question, why should we look at the stars? Oh, this is my <laughs> So I <laughs> try not to get emotional. Um, by looking at the stars, we can understand our place in the universe. We can think about sort of how we got here, what's out there, are we alone, you know, and that perspective I think is really important in trying to get some context into, you know, what life is all about and how we can derive meaning from, you know, being here on earth. And it helps us feel special. I mean, like, you know, life is really precious, being on earth is really precious and, you know, having some context and understanding of how rare that is in the universe is really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have I have multiple more questions for you, Serafina, which maybe we'll get to in the after party. Speaking of the after party, which will commence as soon as we're done here, is absolutely not sanctioned at all by Atlas Obscura. Is that correct, Christina? That's right. And guess yeah. what? It's not mandatory. It's, it's not like if you were in person, you'd be like, "Hey, you want to go to the bar across the street?" You could say, "No, thanks," and get on the train home, or you right. could. Up to you. But you should probably come though. You should. It's going to be a good time. Sick. Um, all right, it is time for our Brontosaurus in Space gallery. So if you have rendered your Brontosaurus in Space, please hold that up now. I'm going to highlight your screen. Serafina, Christina, everyone in the chat, please either commend or roast mercilessly these, these artistic impressions. Never. 
I would never. You would never do that. All right, we're going to start with our resident uh, post-it note paleo artist. Oh, with this, I love the helmet, the helmet. Wow, that is incredible. Actually, oh, like that's so beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove us so we can see these pictures larger. Yeah, please. We don't need to be here. We need to see this art. That looks great, I love it. All right, uh, we're going to Jamie now. Move it a little bit closer. Oh, I see stars. Oh. oh. Oh, oh is it exploring an asteroid? I think that's an asteroid uh, prefix. And it's it says I can't beam me. Beam oh, beam me up, Scott. Nice, nice. That's so cute. Oh, I like Alex. Are right, we're going to Alex here, who has made a constellation with it? Okay, this is on brand for tonight. I like this. That's very good. Yeah, I'm curious to know why it has three legs and not four, but you know what? I'm not here to judge. Maybe it's maybe it lost a leg in a horrible accident. Hard to know. Hard. Are very up for interpretation. Oh, oh, they're best friends. Silence made me long with love. I love it. My heart. Hey, Serafina, are you ready to be incredibly impressed? Yes. yes. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is that a baked good? It is a baked good. Someone bakes us things every week and we can't eat them and it's terrible. Oh it's my wonderful. god. Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is incredible. Oh my god. I'm not even really sure what the base of this is. Is it a Rice crispy thing? I'm not, but you put yeah. in the chat. It is Rice crispy. Okay. It's for Rice crispy. Okay. This is okay. incredible, Hannah. Oh my god. Love it, Hannah. Thank you. Uh, we're going Thank to you. Mountain Dew's number one stand, Michael Baharo. Michael oh, age two persevering. Oh. oh, that's my face. <laughs> so cute. It's very cute. It's very good. I love all of these. What is happening here? Explore the space. Explore oh, the space. Awesome. <laughs> oh, we got a cowbell. We got a cowbell. Oh, I man. love it. What yeah, a this is a this is a good point to remind everyone, please upload these on Insta and Twitter. Tag all of us. Uh, okay. I would love to reshare these. These are always great. Uh, we're going to the most famous Ryan Reynolds. The number one. Number one Ryan Reynolds. The only one that matters. War crap constellations. constellations. What is it? Which, what is happening? <laughs> That's a brontosaurus. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. <laughs> Which stars? Okay. I, <laughs> I like that line. I like that. It leaves a little bit up to interpretation. Ooh. Space, no one can hear you roar. Oh, I'm gonna try this one. Oh, you did it. This is incredible. Wow. Yeah. Look at its head is the alien head. <sighs> there are a lot of really talented people. Wow. That's a fact. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and it's on his hat. That's too? so oh. cool. Yeah. Wow. That's a twofer right there. Cloacal constantly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that we went an hour and we haven't mentioned dinosaur genitalia, I guess outside of the sex lakes, but here we are. Here we are. Uh, in case anyone needs this information, the cloaca is the in-hole and the out-hole for dinos. Um, you'd have to have one to make more dinos or to enjoy dino sex. Cloaca. No hole to rule them all. It's amazing. Hey guys, watch out. Oh, he tried to warn us. He's warning us from the moon. <laughs> oh. Oh. We should have listened. That's so stupid. Oh, the uh, top hat. Love the top hat every time. Oh, Sonic. Do you see the Sonic cup in the back? Oh, Sonic. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Throwback. Wow. This is made for me. Back. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. Good. So good. Oh, Tony brought some colors here. And Tony, I just want to mention, I literally wore that same shirt to the gym today. Heck yeah, the suit tee. Love it. Beautiful Milky Way. Wow. He's just like floating, just in the abyss. That's all you need. Those are such pretty colors. It looks like the Northern Lights, or I guess the Southern Lights too. It's so pretty. Next up is everyone's favorite TikToker. I hope she didn't put a fish in this goddamn picture. What is happening here? Any the laser gun, murdering meteors, space squad. Space squad, take that bitch. <laughs> Killed my father, prepare to die. 
my God. Thank you for labeling the meteor. We had no idea what that was. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta label your figures. Uh, again, if you come to the after party, Jada is the, she runs the after party. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just, just FYI. All right. Uh, oh, we got a two for here. We got a couple. Oh, it's on a rocket. Whoa, wow. that's cool. That's very cool. Put a ring on it. Oh, that's love. Like, that's so cute. I love it. Wow, y'all are so talented. Oh my oh, god. I love seeing how surprised each week the guest part is at how good these drawings are. Incredible. I'm surprised every week too, and I see it every week. Wow. So oh. A of all, I like that you named it Antonio. B of all, I like that you are making us a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio, the Astro Bronto drink. That's a cute ass space outfit, like a cosmonaut outfit. It's so good, so good. Okay, a lot going on here. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, oh. So, Imogene, what? Ah! <laughs> it's Comet and the dinosaur together. In There's space. so much going on in this picture. <laughs> wait. wait what? <laughs> Wait, that's not good. Beetlejuice. It's Beetlejuice. Wait, Imogene, what the fuck? Yeah, it's really. So it's so good. In the Milky, Milky Way. Milky Way. With a you know, Bronto. Because, because Imogene is a returning champion. What is that? Kind of one on one guest wow. party. Well, we're going to allow it. We're going to allow it. I love it. You know what? Again, please oh, upload these. Put, <laughs> put these on Twitter. Put these on the gram. Please tag us. Uh, we haven't, ooh, here we go. Not a green, not an imposter. Not an imposter. Oh, I know this because I teach middle school. This is Among Us. Oh, that's so <laughs> cute. Very good. I like the green. I do like the green. Oh, he looks so determined. Oh, this one's a chunk. I like the dom dom. It's like, it's very chunky to me. I like it. An automatopoeic dinosaur. Yep. Wow, wow. The next one, Brian, this is well done. Oh, holy shit. Under space. You know what? You missed a cue, but you know what? We're in space right now. Everything is literally in space. So technically, that is still a brontosaurus in space. Mm -hmm. That looks like something out of a kid's. Like, that's so beautiful. Yeah. I love the night sky. I love the night sky. That's gorgeous. Uh, you know, this isn't a brontosaurus drawing, but I just want to highlight my sister real quick, who sometime in second or third grade stuck a ring so far up her nose, she couldn't get it out. And I had to go to the nurse's office to console her as they slowly were able to remove it. Hey, Sash, hope you're having a great Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. Wow. Okay. I, I, I'm going to assume this thing is redirecting the meteor that killed the rest of the dinosaurs. Okay. Wow. Yep. That's cool. Oh my God. You guys, our next one is also, I believe this is the first at Dino 101. Have we had a needlepoint one? Yes. We have, okay. This one is also special. Extremely wow. special. Extremely special. That's so good. That's so good. I like the helmet. The helmet detail is good too. Wow. That's so cool. We got another two here. <laughs> Ooh, zero G. Oh, and they're metallic these. They're red shifting. Yeah, they're red shift. I was going to say, some red shift happening. I like that. What a pair. I like your notebook paper. You made it work. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> we. I like, I like how. <laughs> yeah, we can see yours this week, JoJo. <laughs> I like that air, like if it's a helmet in space, air is not coming in and out, but like the thought bubble or the speech bubble is. That <laughs> is able to penetrate through the glass. I like that. Yeah. Good, that makes sense. We love to see it, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> this, I, this is funny. I like this. Melissa, oh, I love that you got so much color in there. Is that a turtle? No, it's, I think it's got like a pack on its back. Yeah, oxygen. Oh, it's a little backpack. Uh, or a jet pack, maybe. Oh, 96 colors. That's what's up, Melissa. Wow. Hey, you guys remember at the top when we talked about the dinosaur that had actually been to space? Mm -hmm. Remember the SpaceX one? Look at what Steve's got. Steve. Wow. Steve. Full circle. How'd you make that in an hour? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of sequins, my friend. 
There it is, the zero G indicator. It is gorgeous. All right, I believe that is our last one. Christina, I'm gonna bring you back. Okay. Serafina, if I can find you. Where, there you are, I'm gonna bring you back as well. All right, uh, it is, we're a little bit over time, but you know what? We always end around 10, 15, this is great. Uh, Serafina, before we bid everyone adieu, do you have any final last words? Thank you for being here, by the way. Is there anything you'd like yeah. to say to our, your adoring audience, your adoring fans here? Oh, well, thank you for having me. Um, everybody go look out at the night sky if you can. It's beautiful. And I really hope you get to see some stars and maybe some dinosaurs. So thank you. Christina, do you have any final last words? Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Serafina. It was an astronomical joy to have you here uh, to help us learn about astronomy, some astrophysics. Um, we did touch on some astrology and a lot of those dinosaurs look like astronauts. Um, so this was a very fun one. Are you trying to make me a drink? Is that what's happening right here? Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just thanking you for your mention of maybe some uh, astroarchaeology is something to consider another another in. <laughs> maybe some interest in astrobiology yeah. <laughs> and uh i had a good ass time good all right all right thank you christina per usual thank you for being the parmesan to my pepperoni um all right final orders of business first of all it's eldon's birthday eldon have, i wish i could find you there's too many people i can't find your screen eldon it's your birthday happy birthday listen come to the after party and we're gonna do shots in your honor uh, and I'm going to make you play Opinion Dominion. So happy birthday, Eldon. Thank you for being here. Come to the after party. Speaking of the after party, if you want to come, it's going to start as soon as I end this thing in like two minutes. If you were there last week, the link is the same. If you need the after party link, dive head first into my DMs on either Instagram or Twitter. I will give you the after party link. Last but not least, next week, I'm very excited. We're going to have my good friend, Sarah Backer, who is going to help us rate dinosaur mascots there's a lot of mascots like literal sports mascots not just birds but actual dinosaurs and other extinct animal mascots from around the world we're going to have like an ncaa style bracket to determine who has the best dinosaur mascot uh with sarah back herself i'm very excited for that that is next week but for now i don't care if you're asking questions searching for dinosaurs or i don't know terraforming your favorite exoplanet never stop digging i love all of you guys but not as much as dinosaurs i will see you in the after party Thank you, Serafina. Thank you, Christina. Thanks for having Bye, me. Thanks, Serafina. Bye. Bye. Bye.